All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Gunfish TV. I wanna thank you for tuning in to my channel today. I appreciate it very much. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I posted on my Instagram, Facebook, and on YouTube that I wanted you all to ask me some questions for me to answer. And let me tell you, you all asked me way more questions than what I was expecting, which is a great thing. I was expecting like 10 questions and I ended up with like 50. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna answer almost all of them. There was a few duplicate questions, but not very many. So I'm gonna start off on my YouTube post, go through, answer all of these questions, just kind of just kickback format out here in my man cave. And I'm gonna go through them. I'm gonna answer them to my, the best of my ability. Uh, for y'all and hopefully y'all like this video. So I'm gonna start off with the very first question. I'm gonna scroll down and we're gonna go through them. And like I said, I'm gonna try to answer every one of them. So question number one, any thoughts on putting together a subscriber tournament? That could definitely be something that I do uh, maybe in the future as I grow a little bit bigger, uh, not to do something huge or anything, I know uh, like one rod, one reel, he's done them in the past. I know Ben Milliken did a great big tournament last year. Um, so definitely something in the future as I grow, that might be something um, that I can try to do for y'all and that would be a lot of fun also. So definitely not out of the question on that. All right, next question. When fishing Gaston, you always fish in 15 foot or less. Do you ever move out into those deeper spots? Well. Sometimes I do, uh, but I'm a very, very shallow water fisherman, and most of the time I fish shallow. Just by nature, I grew up fishing rivers, and I like to stay in eight foot or less. If I get out in eight foot of water, I'm like, whoa, I'm, I'm out here deep. But uh, to answer that question, I do back off. I do fish deep sometimes, especially in the summertime, back off, and I fish 20 foot or more. And a lot of times in the fall, if I'm fishing for spotted bass, I will fish over uh, schools of suspended fish out there in that 20 to 30 foot depth range. So I do fish deeper, but I definitely prefer to stay shallow. And I really think the spots have changed that lake and have pushed a lot of largemouth shallow and they stay shallow year round. So that's a good thing for me. So the next question, what size hook do you prefer when pitching soft plastics such as the Rage Bug and Zoom Crawls. Primarily, I use a 3 aught owner offset wide gap. So it's not a EWG style hook. It is a offset hook, but it has a much, much wider gap than a normal offset worm hook. And I also do tweak my hook sometimes. I bend the tip of them out a little bit. That hook, I use a very, very heavy wire hook, but I do take and I bend it out just a bit because I think it, it shoots through that plastic a little bit better and into their jaw. But primarily 3 alt is what I use. Occasionally with the Rage Bug, I do use 4 alt. But nine times out of 10, I'm flipping a 3 alt owner offset wide gap. All right, so are you going back to Lake Gas in the spring? And if so, what are your favorite three lures? All right, I'm definitely fishing Lake Gas in the spring. I actually fished Lake Gas in this past weekend. It was extremely, extremely tough, um, but I'm gonna be going there a lot more and I really do like that place in the spring. So top three lures, I would definitely say a jig because here soon those fish will be pulling up on docks and I like skipping docks big time with a jig. So it'll be a jig, uh, some type of flat side crankbait, and then also, uh, a rig and jerk bait, you know, as the water's colder now, early spring, I would say a rig and jerk bait. But my top three would be jig, a flat side crank bait, and then probably a jerk bait. A rig has its days, but a jerk bait to me is more consistent. So that would be my top three for early spring, 50 degree water, somewhere in there. All right. What are some lures that you like to use when the water is very cold? And what lures do you like to throw when the fish are starting to transition up shallow and make beds? All right, so what I like to throw when the water is really cold is a silver buddy, which y'all have seen me use a lot, a jig and a jerk bait. 
Those are my number three, three top lures for when the water is extremely cold. And I'm talking about from upper 30s up to like 45 degrees, somewhere in there. And what lures do I like to throw when the fish are starting to transition up shallow and make beds? I would have to say a speed crawl or a rage bug. Um, flipping, you know, flipping wood, finding those fish that are transitioning up shallow to spawn. To me, just a, a, a jig works well too, but typically I use a rage bug or a speed crawl. I've had great success with those through the years and that's what I use. Now, when the water gets up to 60 and those fish are really pushed up, I really, really like to throw a Bangalore. A Bangalore would be my number one top water for the spring when the fish have pulled up to spawn. What's my most consistent springtime bait? I would have to say probably a zoom speed crawl. It just, it gets bit. I've used it for years and years and years. It's very consistent. It, it, it's a consistent lure that gets bit a lot. Um, I use it on the back of a jig. I flip it Texas rig. I use it as a trailer on a chatterbait. It's just, it, it's my number one soft plastic. So I would definitely say it's probably my most consistent springtime bait. Uh, do I ever fish out west? I'm in New Mexico and the closest decent bass fishing is about two hours from me. I've never fished out west. I fished pretty much a little bit north of Virginia and then south down to Florida, but I've never been out west. As my channel grows, I may plan to try to get out there towards Texas, New Mexico, out that way, and I'll try to do some different things for the channel. But right now I'm still relatively small and I don't have a whole bunch of money coming in from the channel just to be spending on a lot of travel, but hopefully that changes. Um, you know, so I may definitely come out west. I want to fish Louisiana sometime. I definitely want to fish Louisiana. That's a bucket list uh, state of mind to fish. So definitely going to try to get out west at some point. Um, where are you from and what live well settings do you run on your Ranger? All right, well, I'm from Southern Virginia. I live here all my life. I know some people say I'm from Kentucky or Louisiana sometimes because of my voice. I guess I sound really South, but, um, but I'm from Southern Virginia. So that's where I live at. And in what live well settings do I run on my Ranger? Um, I turn it to auto when I feel, when I'm filling my live well, I turn it to auto, fill it up, and then I turn it to uh, recirc. And when I turn it to recirc, I hit auto on the switch and I let, I let it just recirc on auto. So when I put it on auto, what I mean is when I turn my dial down on my, my flow right, I turn it to auto and then I push manual on my you know fill button and then I let it fill up. Then I switch back to recirc on the, on the fill right knob and then I hit my button to auto and I just let it run like that. I don't lose any fish, never had any problems with it. Um, and that live well works really well. It's really, really big on, on that boat. So really like it, but that's the settings that I use. What do you look at when planning on where to fish baits and presentation? Well, I look at the time of the year first and foremost, and I look at water temps and I try to figure out where I think the fish will be. And I always try to keep in my mind that a fish is a fish and there's nothing telling him what he can or can't do or where he has to be, how deep he has to be, and how shallow he has to be. We can only make our best guesses from past experience on where the fish may be for a certain time of year and a certain water temp. So I take into consideration water temperature, the time of the year, uh, whether I think they'll be active, you know, and, and then, you know, early spring, I like reds. And then, you know, and then as it gets a little bit warmer, I like blues. And then, you know, then I kind of go to green pumpkins and, and things like that on into the fall. But that's kind of what I, the main things I take into consideration is water temp, time of year, and what the fish should be doing based off of my experience. But I also know that that fish can be wherever he wants. And I've caught fish in water that was in the low 40s. It, you know, as far as temperature, and I've literally caught fish in two foot of water flipping. So I always keep in the back of my mind that that fish can be doing whatever it wants to be doing at any time of the year. So, but I use my past experience and all that to kind of guide me if I'm fishing a new place as to where they should be, whether they're giving a spawn, whether they're following shad up in the backs of the pockets in the fall, 
you know, kind of I take all those things into consideration, and that's how I come up with my game plan for either a trip or a tournament. All right, so you're going to fish a tournament at an unknown location, and you can only use one bait. What would it be and why? That's a really good question. And it would probably be either a Zoom, Speed Crawl, or Rage Bug year round. If I didn't know what time of the year was and, and there's no reference as to what time of the year this would be, I would have to say one of those two baits. And the, and the reason would be is because of my absolute confidence that I have in those lures and just you can catch fish on a Texas rig year round no matter where you're at. It's a very consistent technique and that would be probably what I would go with um, without taking anything else into consideration. Water clarity, you know, water depth, water temp, anything like that. It would be a Texas rig with a speed crawl or a, uh, or a um, rage bug. That, that's, that's what it would be. What do I do for a living? Well, I work for the Department of Transportation. I've been with them for 18 years now. So hoping to stay with them for another 12 years or more and retire. Um, but I work out on the road for the Department of Transportation and that's pretty much what I've done all my life. It, it affords me a lot of time off. Um, I get a lot of time off to be a good fishing and you know that, that's, that's what I do. And I'm lucky to have a, a consistent job like that where I work uh, from a certain time in the morning to a certain time in the afternoon um, every day. So, and I get weekends off, which is really good. So um, very fortunate for that, but, but that's what I do for a living. Um, do you have plans on venturing out of, to some other states and trying different lakes? I do. I've actually, you know, went recently to some different lakes in Carolina. I actually have a trip plan to go down and fish Sharon Harris, Falls, and Jordan Lake in Carolina. So looking really, really forward to going down there. And I also want to do some Florida stuff sometime. Before I started my channel, I went to Florida and fished some. And I haven't since I started my channel, but I love that place. Florida is awesome. So I definitely want to get down there. Um, but it's so many good lakes all over the place. I, I want to fish, I want to fish everywhere, but you know, I can't do that. But I want to start venturing out, fishing more places. So that is definitely um something that I want to get done is fishing other places in different states. And I want to go to Maine too. I want to go to Maine and do some smallmouth fishing up there and maybe like Wisconsin or something. Um, that'd be really cool. All right, mid-March Jordan Lake tips. Well, I can't give any because I've never been to Jordan Lake. However, I am going to Jordan Lake in mid-March. So maybe I'll be able to let you know something after I go there. Hopefully I don't, I don't get a big goose egg, but um, you know, I, I really can't give any. But mid-March, you know, Jordan Lake, if it sets up like a lot of other lakes I fish mid-March, those fish are gonna be pushing up into those spawning pockets off those main lake uh, points, pushing up into those main lake spawning pockets, and then also off the creeks are gonna be pushing up, kind of working their way back into the creeks. So I would say midway back, depending upon water temp, those fish are gonna be migrating back there uh, to spawn up on the shallow flats and all. So I would definitely be looking at, uh, you know, flats with deep water access where they could pull out if a cold front come in or something but also, you know, main lake pockets. And then, like I said, in the creeks, like midway back in the creeks, kind of pushing up towards the back flat so they can get up there and spawn. That's where I would start looking. Do you have any tackle storage hacks or particular ways that you like to store your tackle? Seems like I organize everything within two or three trips. Everything is all over the place again. Well, you are not alone because that is the same way for me. I sit down and organize my stuff. And then after a trip or two, it's, it's all over the place again. So I use Tupperware containers for my soft plastics and I kind of keep my crawls and my trailers separate from my like straight tail worms and curly tail worms. And then I also have a Tupperware in my boat where I have like my new baits, like my jigs that are still in the packages, my buzz bait still in the packages, kind of new stuff that's still in the pack that I haven't taken out yet. Um, but other than that, I keep my hard baits in 3,700 um, Plano storage boxes. So not a lot of hacks other than I use Tupperwares to kind of try to keep my stuff separated. But my stuff gets crazy messy too, so you're not alone on that. Would you come to the upper Chesapeake Bay in the summer like July, August, or even late June? 
Um, yeah, I would love to come to the Chesapeake Bay, to the Upper Bay. I've watched shows where people have fished out there. Mike Iaconelli, uh, Timmy Horton's done some stuff out there. It looks like it's a lot of quality fish, and uh, it's a tidal fishery. I, I do know that. So it's definitely somewhere that I would look at fishing. I would like to go there. Um, so definitely I would take that into consideration because, uh, you know, I want to try different places and that's a really cool looking body of water and uh, it's something that I would definitely fish. Uh, have you or would you fish with your viewers? Um, well, some of my buddies watch my channel, so I guess you could say that I've, I've fished with them and they fish with me. I haven't really fished with anybody that I don't know or anything that watch my channel. It's not out of the question. Um, so I would definitely take that into consideration uh, for sure, but probably the only ones I fish with have been my buddies that, that watch my channel. Uh, thinking about getting a new RT-188P, uh, watch your video on your boat. What do you like and what are there some other things now that you've owned your boat a bit longer that you may not like? And also any rough water concerns um, that I may have being that I fish the St. Lawrence River. Um, well, I love my boat. Uh, I have nothing really bad to say about it whatsoever. Um, I, I can't find anything to say bad about it other than the darn windshield. Like I've said before, the windshield's tiny. Uh, they really could have put something up there to help cover your face or deflect some water from splashing all in your face. But that's really the only thing that I can say that I don't like about it. And I've owned the boat now since August and fished out of it a ton. Uh, so nothing bad to say about it. As far as rough water, I have been in some rough water on it. I got into some around four footers in a tournament where the current was going out of the river very hard and uh, the wind was blowing against it and it created some massive swells and it performed very, very well. I didn't take any water over the bow uh, or anything like that. I, I drove it like I had some sense but I was very, very impressed with it. So rough water, you know, four footers, you're good to go. Anything over that, I would say, yeah, you might want to consider a bigger 21 foot glass boat or something like that. But from what I do with it, it does great. And I think, I think it would be uh, fine for you as well. What is my biggest bass ever and what did I catch it on? My biggest bass ever weighed, certified, weighed eight pounds, 10 ounces, and I caught it on a bubblegum floating worm and I caught it in the Nottoway River. And that was back in 2007, I wanna say, 2007, yeah. But it weighed eight pounds, 10 ounces. I did catch a bass on a frog one day on the Nottoway that I believe was over nine pounds. It was 25 and a half inches long. It was an absolute monster, but I didn't have a scale with me. I only had a tape measure, so I measured how long it was. I snapped some pictures of it and let it go. But certified eight pounds, 10 ounces is my biggest. Are you, are you going to have more tournaments? Are you going to fish more tournaments on the Chowan River? Yes, I fish tournaments on the Chowan all the time and I'm definitely gonna fish more this year. I fish tournaments on the Chowan pretty much all my life and I'm gonna have some and some other people are having a bunch of uh, different stuff, cat trails, stuff like that on the Chowan, and I'm probably gonna fish some of them as well. So yes, I'm gonna fish more on the uh, Chowan River. And then it says, you need to come fish Sharon Harris in Holly Springs, North Carolina. I am coming to Sharon Harris in a couple weeks. I'm gonna be there in a couple weeks and hopefully gonna catch a big girl out there. So I'm coming to Sharon Harris. How does the ranger, your ranger, stand up against the competition, in my opinion? My boat, I think, stands up against the competition very well. My boat's a 2020. It was built by ranger. The new 2021s are built by, by White River Marine, and they're made out of the same facility as the trackers. I don't know if that's gonna change the quality of the boat, or if it's gonna be just as good, I'm not really sure. But right, my boat, personally, I think it would stand up against any aluminum boat that I've seen as far as the fishability, how big it is, the storage and everything. It's, it's a really great boat. I think the only other boat that may surpass it may be like an Express or a Vexus as far as the hull 
it's a little bit different design hold designed just like a bass boat so in rough rough water they may perform better but i'm very very pleased with with my ranger so i think it stands up against the competition very well um what's the favorite rod that you have well my favorite rod was i had a, a seven foot three vexan uh frog and rod that i broke earlier this year and it broke my heart when i broke it that was definitely my favorite rod i am getting a rod very similar to it being built right now but that had to have been my favorite rod but other than that i would say a seven foot ducket medium heavy ghost uh, that's what i use for flipping i love that rod a lot of people don't like ducats but that that rod has done me well and that would probably be the rod that i like the most out of the ones I have right now. Really good rod. You could use it for a ton of different techniques. So seven foot duck, but they don't make the ghost anymore. Uh, just so you know, they make the Silverado, which is basically the same blank as the ghost. So uh, that would be my favorite that I have right now. Uh, what presentation do I prefer? Frogging or flipping? Anything shallow water, hardcore shallow water fishing, that's what I like. I like power fishing and, you know, shallow water, flipping heavy cover, throwing the frog or in pads around trees, hydrilla. That's what I prefer. That's how I like to fish. That would be my favorite uh, presentation. And that would be the one that I prefer over anything else. Um, would you recommend a Ranger aluminum boat over a fiberglass 19 footer, footer? Any pros or cons for a guy that fishes medium sized lakes? I would say on medium-sized lakes, that Ranger aluminum or any bigger aluminum boat, 18 foot or better, I think would, would be perfect uh, for you. I prefer aluminum over glass. It hauls easier. It's lighter. Um, you don't burn as much gas, you know, running them, operating them. And, uh, you know, they fish almost comparably to glass. Some people say the wind blows them around a little bit more than glass because glass is a little bit heavier. Uh, to me, I haven't really noticed that that much. It, it doesn't bother me a bit. Also, you can access shallow water better with an aluminum boat. They don't take on as much water. So, you know, they float in a lot shallower water. And me being a river fisherman, I want to be, be able to get in some of those shallow spots. So, uh, to me, I, was, I would suggest an aluminum boat. What are my fishing goals and plans? And are you sticking to small tournaments or trying to go bigger? Um... Really my goals and plans, I would say, I've been bass fishing now for over 30 years. I pretty much started bass fishing when I was six years old and I'm 37 now. I've fished a ton of tournaments. I've never fished a lot of bigger stuff. Um, I would guess, I would say maybe because I didn't have the confidence then to fish them, even though I did fairly well in smaller tournaments, I just never felt like I had the confidence to fish against, um, you know, or fishing bigger tournaments. I definitely have the confidence now. Um, I feel like I'm a much better angler than I used to be. I would say my goals, um, not really referring to tournaments, would just be to be to be a better angler than I was the last time I hit the water. I always try to learn something every time I go out, and as much as I fish, I learn something new every time I go. I, I don't think I'm the best fisherman out there by no means. I don't think I'm a great fisherman. I have a lot to learn. I pay attention pay attention to what other people do, pay attention to what I do, what works, what doesn't work, and I just try to be a better angler. So really, that is my, my goal. Um, you know, as far as sticking with smaller tournaments, I really, really enjoy fishing smaller tournaments. I enjoy the camaraderie between the guys, the laugh and playing, it's a lot less seriousness. So I really, really like fishing smaller tournaments. This year, I am planning on fishing a few bigger tournaments, maybe some cat tournaments, some ABA stuff, and I may even fish some Federation stuff as well. So I'm planning on fishing a few bigger tournaments this year, as well as fishing some of my smaller stuff as well, because I really hate to get away from that because I really, really enjoy it. I'm not trying to be a bass master or make it uh, to be pro or anything like that. You know, I, I just want to fish, have a good time, and just grow as an angler and become a better angler. So that would be my, my goals. What size flipping weight do you prefer in the river? Uh, three eighths. Three eighths, sometimes I flip half, but most of the time I flip three eighths. So I would say three eighths would be my number one size 
for fishing the river and then also flipping in, in lakes as well. I have more three eighths uh, worm sinkers, tungsten than any other size that I own. So three eighths is my number one. Uh, what are some tips and pointers you have for someone that is new to bass fishing and that's new to bass fishing off a boat in bigger bodies of water? Uh, some tips and pointers I would say would be do your homework. So sit down, look at mapping if you have access to uh, any Navionics mapping or anything like that on a depth finder, looking at depth charts. Also look at Google Earth. Look at the lake you're going to go fish. You know, you, you can see a lot of times humps, points, and stuff like that on Google Earth. And then take into consideration what time of year it is, you know, where the fish should be. Uh, you know, is it midsummer and the fish can be out deep on points? Is it spring? They're pushing up into pockets to spawn. Uh, fall, are they migrating back into the pockets to follow shad? And then, of course, winter, they're migrating back out uh, to the main lake on points and stuff like that, or out in a big creek. They're sitting out on secondary points or something. So that's what I would say would just be do your homework, you know, plan, look at maps and kind of figure out, you know, what you want to do from there. Um, what baits do you use in 48 degree water and dirty? 48 degree water and dirty. I would say a big spinner bait with Colorado blades, maybe like a chartreuse and white or even a red um, a chatter bait, and then I would also say a red crawl crankbait of some sort. Um, something that's got a tight wiggle to it, maybe like a, uh, a DT6, a DT10, maybe a flat side crankbait, something like that. Rapala's come out with some new uh, flat side stuff. I Defoe put out, you know, something like that. Something that's going to be moving. They can track down. You can catch them on a jig too, but in 48 degree water and muddy, I'm going to be throwing some type of moving bait that puts out a lot of vibration and that I can also fish kind of slow. So that, that's what I would be using. Rivers or lakes, which are more fun and which is easier to break down? Definitely rivers. I love fishing rivers. I grew up fishing rivers. So it definitely would be rivers is, uh, to me, are more fun. And which are easier to break down? I would also say rivers. And the reason I say rivers is because you have current and the current is going to set fish up in eddies, current breaks, outside bends, things like that. So to me, a river is a little bit easier to break down. Maybe that's because I fished a river all my life, but to me, rivers are a little bit easier than a really big lake um, because the fish, big lakes sometimes are really, really hard to figure out. Even if you think you know where they're supposed to be, a lot of times they ain't there. So, uh, so I would say river. Um, Somebody wants me to show my rod and reel arsenal. Okay, I'm gonna do a video on my 2021 rod and reel arsenal. I'm gonna do that real soon. I'm gonna go over everything, my rods, my reels I use for whatever techniques, what pound test I have on them and all that. So that is coming, so look out for that. And then uh, what's your personal opinion on custom painted knockoffs, for instance, crankbait and jerkbaits, and would you be interested in field testing them um, to hear your thoughts on their performance and what I think uh, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, my personal opinion is you can have the best looking paint job in the world. And if you don't have a blank underneath of it, that's worth a crap. It's not going to be any good. It really comes down to what KO blank you use because that's where the performance comes in. Um, you know, a fish isn't sitting there staring down a crankbait saying that's the prettiest thing I've ever seen but it's running like crap, but I'm going to eat it anyway. You know, you, you want a, a, a knockoff blank that performs very, very well, and then I think paint is secondary because I've used some of the ugliest baits you've ever seen in your life, and I've caught absolute hammers on them because of the action of the lure, not because of how good it looked. So, yeah, I think it comes down to the blank, personally. So that is the questions on YouTube that everybody asked. So I'm gonna roll over to my Facebook and I'm gonna go through those questions and answer them. So I'm gonna jump on my phone, switch over real quick, and then we're gonna start back on those. All right, so just open up my Facebook. I'm gonna go through these questions and answer them just like I did the last one. So I see you chunk a frog a whole lot when the temperature range is right, but when the frog bite is off, do you ever throw a floating worm? Absolutely, I throw a bubblegum floating worm 
believe it or not, a lot. Y'all haven't seen it on my channel probably too much um, because the, the bite for some reason on that's been a little off the last couple years, but I've caught some absolute giant fish, including my personal best, on a bubble gum floating worm, so I do throw a floating worm a lot. All right, on the frog and buzz bait, do you use braid or a copolymer? I always use 50 pound braid. I throw both of them on 50 pound braid all the time. So I throw them on braid, not copolymer. What is the magical water temp when you know you're going to jack a few pre-spawn jaws? 55 degrees. To me, 55 degrees is the absolute magical water temp that tells those fish move up shallow, they push up to the wood in the pockets or docks or whatever, and they get up pretty shallow, and man, that bite really, really turns on at 55 degrees. To me, that seems to be the magical temperature, so I'm definitely going to say 55. All right, what's my favorite lure to catch them on? It would be a frog. A frog, hands down, is my favorite lure to catch fish on. Top water, I love top water. I love to blow up. I love throwing a frog. I have just so much confidence in a frog. It's crazy. So it would definitely be a frog. How many days, how many days a week do you get to fish? In the summertime, sometimes I fish three days a week. Now in the winter, where our days are short, I'm fishing one day a week, one day a weekend. But time's gonna change here soon, so that's gonna go up to two days a week most likely. But sometimes in the summer, I fish three days a week, but most of the time, twice a week is the norm for me. All right, what's my favorite jig and trailer? My favorite jig is a Strike King skipping jig. It has the uh, screw lock trailer holder on it. They are, to me, they are phenomenal. They're great jigs. Blue Crawl is my number one favorite color. And then my favorite trailer is a Rage Menace Grub, Twin Tail Grub, Rage Menace. I use that thing for swimming a jig, skipping a jig, fishing a jig on the bottom, you name it. I use it as a chatterbait trailer as well. So that would be my jig and trailer combo. That, that's my number one um, favorite jig and trailer. What's my favorite bait to use of all time? Speed crawl. A speed crawl would be my number one favorite bait to use of all time. I've used it so many years, it's been very productive. I caught some absolute giants on it, even though it's small. I've won a lot of tournaments on it. That would be my favorite bait of all time and my favorite bait to use as well. Because I love flipping, flipping heavy cover and that's a good bite and, and I flip a speed crawl a lot. So it would be that. Uh, what kind of knots do you tie your crankbaits on with? Primarily a polymer knot, but sometimes I do use a, an improved clinch knot. But pretty much on my moving stuff, I use a polymer knot. My flipping stuff and stuff like that, I use a clinch knot most of the time. Uh, what tournament trail is my fishing this year? I'm probably going to fish a local club that I, that I fish. And then I'm also probably going to fish some cats, some ABAs, and then some, um, some region uh, federation stuff as well. Sorry, that was a phone call. Um, what made me choose a metal boat over fiberglass? All right, metal boat over fiberglass, well, it'd be where I fish. It, it, the water that I fish is, is what it would be. I fish rivers all my life. I bump a lot of stumps, jump logs, stuff like that. So I've always been an aluminum boat guy. Um, so I pretty much have stuck with it. I've never seen the need to have a great big glass boat personally. So I, I stuck with aluminum, and that's really what made me pick aluminum over glass. All right, if I only had one bait to throw in a pre-spawn, what would it be and why? Um, it, would, it would be something flipping. It would be a rage bug or a speed crawl, and I just think that's the most consistent lures for me, and I'm kind of leaning towards the river when I'm talking about this. Um, maybe in the lake it would be a jig, but for the river it would be a speed crawl or a rage bug flipping treetops and stuff like that. Because when those fish push up, they push up in those laydowns and treetops, pushing up into coves of spawn, and it's a very consistent pattern, and, uh, and that's what I would use. All right, so this was kind of asked before, but do you prefer lake fishing or river fishing? Definitely river fishing. That's, that's what I prefer. Why do I choose copolymer line? Um, well, 
I like the way copolymer handles. I'm not a fluorocarbon guy. I don't like the way fluorocarbon handles. I've used all different kinds of fluorocarbon. I never really liked the way it handled. It's, it's a personal opinion thing um, and a personal preference thing as well. But copolymers to me handle very well. They don't get a lot of memory in them. They don't have a lot as much stretch as mono and they're just, they're tough. It's abrasion resistant. It handles well, it works for me. So things that work for me, I'm pretty old school. I tend not to do a lot of changing around. So I'm gonna use what works and copolymer works for me. So that's all the questions on Facebook. Now I'm gonna jump over to Instagram. All right, so just open up my Instagram. I'm gonna start answering these questions now. Uh, some of them have been answered already. Uh, so I'm gonna go through the ones that haven't. Uh, somebody asked roughly how many days per year do you fish? I, I'm not real sure. Maybe, maybe a hundred. I, I fish as many days as I possibly can, but I, I'm not really sure. It, it would have to be, it would have to be around a hundred. I, I would think somewhere in there, maybe more, maybe less, but as much as I can, usually twice a week in the summer, um, sometimes three times a week, but always once a week year round, I, I, I fish. Have you ever considered moving somewhere for better fishing? If so, where and what lake? <laughs> well, I've definitely considered moving to Florida because Florida is just, that's just the most awesome place for fishing in the world, honestly. Um, so many opportunities to catch so many different things down there. I don't really have a specific lake, but I would say if I was to move to any state, it would definitely be Florida somewhere southern mid florida southern florida it's just god the fishing down there is just crazy it's so awesome so definitely would be florida um i know you use copolymer on a lot of your setups what setups do you use other types of line on and i think i saw one of your spinning outfits with braid to leader um my spinning rods i do throw braid to leader on all of them unless i'm throwing like a fluke or something in the pads and of course i'm throwing straight braid um other setups i use braid for buzz bait big walking top water and frog that's what i use and then uh also a rig i can't forget a rig so i use braid on those everything else i use copolymer or mono but on my spinner rods braid to a copolymer or mono leader is is what i use when was the first time, when was your first time ever fishing Gaston? Man, I was probably, I want to say 16 years old, 16 or 17 years old. I pulled my John boat up there, the one I still have now, my Lumacraft, and I fished up there. I think I, I bass fished some, and I did a lot of cat fishing when I was up there at that time as well. So probably when I was around 16. And have you ever done any offshore fishing in the ocean? I have. I've uh, been offshore several times. It's fun. It's not my favorite thing in the world to do, but if you get on a bunch of fish, or a school of uh, dolphin or tuna, or you know, get out there on a, a floating pallet or something like that, or a grass line that's loaded, it is really fun. But yeah, I have been offshore fishing in the ocean. Are you down for traveling to Toledo Bend or Sam Rayburn? They're my home lakes and we could get some biggins when this polar vortex leaves out of here. I do know in Texas, y'all have had a mess. Hope everybody's safe out there, all your family and everything, and hopefully everybody's safe. It's just, it's been some crazy weather all over the United States. But yes, I would definitely consider traveling to Toledo Bend and Sam Rayburn. I know that there's some great biggins get caught out there, uh, world famous lakes, definitely somewhere that I want to get an opportunity to fish um, at some point in my life. So yes, I would definitely consider traveling there to fish those lakes. And then if I had to fish every tournament for a year with just one lure, what lure would it be? That, that's a good question. Year round, year round, I would have to say a Texas rig crawl, um, whether it be speed crawl or whether it be a rage bug, it would be a Texas rigged crawl lure. Like I said, year round they produce, I think it's one of the most productive lures that you can use. I have a ton of confidence in it and it's something that always, always catches fish. So that would be my number one lure. 
If I couldn't use anything else in a tournament, that is what it would be. If we're talking only summertime, it would be a frog. Hands down, it, it would be a frog. But day in and day out, a Texas rig year-round would outperform, I think, anything else that, that I could throw. Confident because of where my confidence is. So I've answered all of the questions. I appreciate everybody that asked me one because I had, it was well over 50. I think it was like 60 questions almost. I appreciate it very much. I appreciate y'all's interest in my channel and that you even wanted to hear what I had to say. Um, so it's very much appreciated. Everybody that subscribes, watches my videos and uh, you know comments and tells me they like what I'm putting out, sees me. I see people now that, that you know they watch my channel and they say, hey man, you know, I like your channel. You're doing a good job. I appreciate it very much. You know, if you ever do see me, um, you know, on the water or wherever, come over and talk to me. You're not bothering me a bit. And uh, hopefully things that I show on my channel help you all catch more fish and bigger fish and maybe your personal best um, because that's what I do this for. Um, not for a bunch of views and a bunch of stuff. You know, I, I don't go out doing stuff just to try to get a whole bunch of views and all. I really want people to genuinely learn and enjoy what they see on my channel. So with that being said, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button and go check out some of my other videos. I got a lot of good stuff on my channel. I really, really appreciate y'all watching this video and I'll see you next time on Gunfish TV.